Home Secretary Swella Braverman has accused the Met Police of playing favourites with protesters after refusing to ban the pro-Palestinian marches on uh, Armistice Day. I want to know, do you agree with her? What do you feel about her language? Tell us why you agree, why you don't agree, and do get in touch on that. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, has accepted a pro-Palestinian rally will go ahead in central London on Saturday, but uh, we're told by sources at number 10 he's going to hold the Met Police Chief accountable if they do turn violent. And Suella Bravman has come under fire for comparing those protests to sectarian rallies in Northern Ireland and repeated her phrase that they are hate marches. Well, joining me right now is Robert Courts. He's Conservative MP. He's also chair of the Defence Select Committee. Good morning to you, Robert. Morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Just first of all, um, do you agree with Suella Bravman's comments? So I think the thing that we've got to put first uh, and foremost on this is that Armistice Day and Remembrance is absolutely sacrosanct. Uh, this is not just another date in the calendar. The Cenotaph is not just another place in the UK. Uh, this means immense uh, amounts to people who have served, uh, to veterans, to those who continue to serve, and frankly, just to ordinary members of the UK who are proud of their country and want to mark its sacrifices in a proud and respectful way. So anything that compromises the respectful, uh, sombre nature of remembrance ought not to be tolerated. And that's the principle we have to put first and foremost. What does not tolerated mean? Does that mean it should be banned or does it mean that you know, people should... I mean, we just had a caller on who's saying, look, he's going to go down and try and be one of those to protect the Senate off. They are je people genuinely fear that it's going to be desecrated. So you make a very good point there, and that is exactly at the heart of the issue that the police have to deal with. There is uh, absolutely no question that any violence, anything that mars remembrance, any anti-Semitic uh, behaviour is absolutely unacceptable. The but police have to apply week. a test whether there is a likelihood of there being a serious risk of violence. They have access to intelligence. Uh, they can see the way that something's happened in the past. There have clearly been a number of instances that have caused concern, and they have to make sure that they carry that out with the most utmost seriousness, okay. given so, the seriousness so apologies. and significance. I'm not, I'm not as clear. To yes they... or no? Yes or no? Should the march go ahead? Should Sorry, the police, as to whether should it should the police be banned? Ban it? So as to whether it should be banned, um, that's a slightly different question, because clearly in a free society, you have to have a balance between the right to protest and, where does and, the balance everyone, else's right to, uh, and everyone else's right to mark something in a sombre uh, and serious way. So I don't think it should be happening. I don't think it's right that it takes place this weekend. I don't think it should be taking place uh, on Armistice Day. There is clearly far too much potential for people to be uh, okay, upset. So you don't think uh, it should be tolerated? You don't think it should take place? Does that mean you think that the Met Police should ban the march or that the marchers well, themselves should call it off? Well, the marchers themselves should call it off uh, is my and personal if they don't? view on it. Uh, as, uh, as, as from a defence select committee perspective, that's just my personal view. But I think they should be calling it off. Clearly, the risk uh, of, of offence being caused is too great. As to whether it should be banned, the assessment has to be made as to whether there, are, there is likelihood of, being, of there being serious violence or not. If there is any likelihood of such serious violence, clearly, uh, then it should be uh, it should be banned. But if the police are satisfied that it can be moved well away from the cenotaph, that it doesn't take place at the same time that there is no danger of the two things being conflated. So there's no danger of marking armistice being conflated with protests mm -hmm. or being, and there's no danger of any violence, no danger of any anti-Semitic behavior, which is utterly, utterly unacceptable. Then that's a different question. The police have to take that decision. You can't have politicians telling the police what to do, obviously in a free society, but quite rightly, the prime minister said he'll be holding them to account for the decisions mm. they make, because this is clearly a very serious and sensitive moment. I'm fascinated by this whole operational independence of the of the police, which we're, we're talking about. We know that Yvette Cooper, the shadow Home Secretary, had, uh, had an urgent question in the Commons uh, just about an hour ago. Uh, Swella Brothman didn't arrive for that. Chris Philp, the policing minister, uh, took her place to answer that question. But operational independence, I've always thought, means... You know, um, yes, they tell you to go and arrest Nigel Farage. You, they won't just go and do that. It involves individuals. But when it comes to the policing of our nation, I mean, you know, the police are paid by the taxpayer. They, the, the Met Chief is, you know, appointed by the Home Secretary. I mean, I don't think the police should be completely independent of government in that sense, unless they're being used politically motivated way. Of course, of course, the Home Secretary should have a say. In the same way that the, the, the Labour Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, as the Police and Crime Commissioner, should have a say in how the policing takes place in our, our capital city. 
Yeah, well, I, I can't disagree with that. I mean, clearly it's the case that the Home Secretary, the Prime Minister, the Mayor should all have a say. Uh, clearly they are, have got the ability to express their views and they have made their views absolutely Indeed. crystal clear. That's slightly different from the point of actually giving instructions, which of course is a very long established principle in a liberal society that politicians don't tell the police what to do. Because whilst you may act uh, with the best of intentions on one occasion, clearly somebody one day may not have the best of intentions. Okay. So there's an understandable reason why that is a long established principle. But clearly it's a matter of enormous sensitivity and the police are going to have to take their duties on this occasion of, <laughs> even more seriously than they normally would anyway. What, what do you make of Sibylla Brabman uh, likening these marches, you still calls them hate marches, the pro palestinian marches uh, with sectarian marches in northern ireland during the troubles bearing in mind that a lot of those so-called hate marches she would she was referring to in northern ireland are actually carried out by protestant groups who would be you know strongly supportive of of the conservative government on a on a general day I have to say, I'm not I'm not really a fan of using direct read across examples because every moment in history is slightly different. Uh, every political circumstance is slightly different. We've got to analyse what's going on here rather than draw a, 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 a comparison with something in the past, particularly where it's something that's recent and sensitive, as is the case uh, with Norline. So let's look at what is likely to happen on this occasion. And as I say, the sacrosanct principle, which is that there must be no departing from, is that for the sake of veterans, serving personnel, and the great British public, uh, remembrance must be protected. OK. Um, and in terms of where we are, in terms of what's happening, let's, let's remember, it's not things aren't all happening just in the UK. Um, things are happening in Gaza, in Israel. In terms of where mm. we are, in terms of the government, the, the British government's support for the Israeli government, do you think they have struck the right balance? There's now a lot of more pressure for there to be a humanitarian pause, but a, a, a sizable pause, not just a few hours, to allow uh, aid to get in to Gaza. Do you think that the British government, Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, you know, you, you're a member of his party, uh, are, are they striking the right balance between the right of Israel to self-defence and to attempt to destroy, defeat Hamas in Gaza, but also the right of innocent civilian men, women and children in Gaza to, well, to life and liberty and safety. Yes, I mean, this is the most uh, difficult circumstance. Um, Israel absolutely has the right to defend itself. We are talking about the worst attack on Jews uh, since the Holocaust. Uh, and clearly, uh, Hamas, who are responsible for all of the pain and suffering of uh, Palestinians and Israelis alike, uh, are clearly an organisation of the greatest evil. Uh, and they must clearly be removed from the equation if there's ever to be a political settlement. Clearly, equally, on the other side, you have to ensure that as much humanitarian aid as is possible uh, is able to flow in. So when you talk about you know, ceasefires and pauses, uh, I appreciate not you personally, but when one talks about them, you have to understand exactly what is meant. I mean, a ceasefire wouldn't be observed by Hamas. They were the ones, after all, who attacked Israel on this occasion. Mm. Uh, and if it were simply Israel giving in, then I can understand why they wouldn't accept that. Uh, but clearly there is suffering and we will want, uh, as, the British, uh, as the British state, to alleviate suffering wherever we can, which is always uh, what we look to do. Um, can I ask you what, you what you make of Keir Starmer, the Labour leader? He's accused the Prime Minister of cowardice for picking a fight with Sir Mark Sedwell, the Metropolitan Police Chief. Um, but he has been standing firm with the Prime Minister uh, uh, and, of course, the US government and other allies on support for Israel, Israel and not calling for a ceasefire, despite the fact he's seeing we've had one uh, front bench resignation. We may well see more moves for a, a vote in Parliament, which could see big dividing lines among uh, Labour MPs. Um, is there any such dividing line on Tory benches? A dividing line on over, over what the issue of the ceasefire, over the issue of supporting Israel. Well, I think there's overwhelming uh, cross-party support, for that matter, not just on the Tory bench, but cross-party support supporting Israel, um, but equally wanting to ensure that as much humanitarian aid as possible uh, to get in for those who are suffering. I mean, we mustn't forget the Palestinian people are the uh, victims of Hamas too. Uh, and so the, clearly there are innocent people there who are suffering, who must be helped. Um, so there's, I think, there's broad cross-party support for that overall principle. Uh, and whilst I know one level is a little bit rich for someone whose job is to scrutinise the government, uh, you know, it's easy to be an observer, isn't it? But it's much, much harder when you're in the position of having to make those decisions yourself, which clearly is the position the Prime Minister's in. Absolutely. I, I enjoy that privileged position, armchair general and everything. <laughs> um, really appreciate you joining us, Robert Courts.